All right, so we'll get started. This is going to be your second session on WordPress. Again, we've only covered up to the point of getting XAMPP up and running. Now, if you have not done this yet, you want to do this right now, go to FOL, go to content for this course, go to week four, and whatever version you're in, down near the bottom, if you're in the online or the regular, you should see somewhere the two versions of XAMPP. Obviously, whatever type of operating system you have, whatever computer you're on, you should be grabbing that version. If you're on a Mac and you have the Windows partition, that is what we prefer you do, so we all run into the same troubles together. But we have resolved any of the issues we ran into with the Mac operating system, and there's a little fix for it here, which I will cover in a second. So if you were here on, or whatever, if you were here for the previous class and things weren't working that well for your Mac, you couldn't get that one server to turn green, the MySQL server, everything you need to do is in here, and it doesn't take long. Um, in fact, you can start on that now and try and get that done while we're going through these notes. So make sure that you have this downloaded. And while I'm going through the initial part of these notes, I'm going to have mine installing. So I'm actually going to do an install for you guys. Even though we did this in class the other day, I just want to make sure we've all gone through this and we understand it. So it's a single install file, like most applications. I want you getting it off FOL and not from the web because they've altered the versions and I want it to match up with what I have in my videos. So go to FOL, get the version I have there, extract it to wherever you're going to extract it to. Okay, if the file download was not interrupted while you're downloading it, the extraction should be fine. A couple of you the other day had some trouble because the download seemed to, it only went about halfway. So it still was there and you could see it, but you couldn't extract it. So assuming you can extract it, you double click, the software installer is right there, you click it, okay? I'm hoping most of you have done this. Just in case, you should be doing this with me now. Click yes. It will also prompt you with a message related to your virus protection software. This is totally normal. It probably won't happen on a Mac, but it will on a PC, especially if you have some of it running. So if it's gonna be a problem, we'll deal with that later. For now, you just click yes and you click OK and you continue with the installation. So this is the setup wizard. It's going to ask you where you want to put everything except all the prompts. Just take it how it is and accept it that way. Have this go into your C drive. If you did not install into the C drive, do not move it now. Just find the same folders we're going to reference later in the lecture. It'll still work in another folder. It should be on your C drive somewhere, but this wanted to make it its own folder on the C drive. If you put it like into your web design folder or something, that's okay, just don't move it around. That messes it up if you start moving program files. So hit next, and when you get here, if you don't uncheck this, it's going to open up a web page just to show you a little bit more about why this software is available, what it does. I'm gonna uncheck it so we don't have to go there. If you don't uncheck that and you get to the web page, that is not the, f the end of your installation. A few of you thought that was the end of your installation on, on Wednesday, the other day in class. So hit next, this is your installation. Okay, so while that's installing, we're going to cover a couple more uh, slides here, okay? So now that we have XAMPP up and running, we should be able to get WordPress set up and running using XAMPP to power it. So this is why we need XAMPP. And there's a variety of applications like this. There's another one called WAMP and a few other ones that have different kind of names. What they do is they perform the role of a hosting company and what they accomplish for you with their server computers. So XAMPP is going to act as your GoDaddy or your 2M host or any of these providers that we've talked about. Whereas in most cases, even people that know how to use WordPress very well, they don't know that you can actually run it on your own computer without being connected to the internet and without having to go live. So there is an advantage to using XAMPP. So we talked about WordPress, um, at length, the first class. We're just going to quickly review some of these uh, some of these slides. Okay, so WordPress, unlike the HTML sites that we put together in the web workshop, WordPress runs like a database. So it's a little bit different. What is the deal here? Hang on one sec. Okay, so as we discussed on the previous slide here, it is 100% free. It's created by a community of people that are working on it for free. And a lot of these have a vested interest in it, a lot of these programmers, because they can create themes that they can sell for money, pre-designed websites. It started as a blogging software. 
and it turned into this really good WYSIWYG platform for making any kind of website, not just a blog. But the difference is, even though it's free, it's easy to get your hands on, it's got all these developers contributing to it, WordPress works as a database. So it's a dynamically driven database. It means when you go to call up pages or content in there, it's being pulled out of this database. There's things working all the time. Whereas with your My Personal Portfolio or your Steps website inside the Web Workshop folder, it would just go in there and just load up the pages in a static manner. So the database needs to be run like a program and you need a server to do that. So people, when they learn how to use WordPress, they just assume, well, I'm never gonna be able to use WordPress just on my computer and set up a website and plan it all out and have it totally set up locally and then launch it to the web after that by migrating the site to a hosting company. But that you can do that. And that's the advantage of knowing how to use a utility program like XAMPP that will act like a server. Yes, it is a bit quirky because it likes to use different ports and parts of your computer that other programs use. So we'll get through that today. But that's why we need XAMPP. Because we're not gonna set up accounts with GoDaddy yet. That is an option you'll have in the class after the test. You can still keep using XAMPP or go with GoDaddy and set up a nice inexpensive hosting account and have your WordPress site live online. It's up to you guys, but for right now, going into the test, and the test will actually test you on using XAMPP too. It, it just won't test you to install it. It should already be installed. So, so the five minute install is something we're gonna do today. It's, they call it the famous five minute install, and it does take less than five minutes if you pay attention to what you're doing, okay? Now, WordPress.com, you can head over there and check it out more if you want to. We talked about it in the first class, but I just want to clarify one last time that is not the same as WordPress.org. It's less powerful. It's less adaptable. You can offer quite a bit of things using WordPress.com, but like you wouldn't go over there and set up an entire retail store. You wouldn't have access to the same amount of plugins and bells and whistles that you can put on your website using WordPress.org. And it, it's not that much harder to use. So WordPress.org allows you to make the WordPress install in your own hosting folder, okay? And then set it up from there so you're in full control. So for this example that we're gonna do in class, our hosting is on our computer. So XAMPP for, to us is like GoDaddy the hosting company. Okay, so that's just a couple comments about WordPress.com just to make sure one more time you guys aren't confused about what we're doing here, okay? So per the last lecture, you were to download this not from apachefriends.org, which is the, uh, the, that's the name of the website where the, the creators of XAMPP have posted all their different versions. I've put the version up on FOL that I want you guys to use on Fanshawe Online. And if anybody's watching this video, you don't have access to Fanshawe Online, I'll, I'll show you which version we're installing, okay? So make sure that that's what you've put in because then everything will look the same, okay? Here are the issues that we may have run into. So right now I'm just gonna make sure I get it installed and up and running, almost done. Okay, so we'll talk about the issues first for a minute. And it does take a few minutes, like that's why I, I'd set up that little timeline for class today. Um, I think Macs are generally getting it installed a little bit more quickly, but on a PC it, it takes a bit. So still going, it'll be done in a minute. Um, when you have a PC, some of the stuff that causes issues uh, with, with the ZAMP servers not being able to run, the most common culprit would be an antivirus program. Now I know none of you want to turn your antivirus programs off and that's not what I'm telling you to do. But if you do have a Windows computer, the only antivirus program you really need is Windows Security Essentials. Okay, that, that's what it was called up through Windows 7. If you have Windows 8 or Windows 10, uh, it's called Windows Defender. And if it's turned off, it's probably because you have other virus protection that made it turn off. So you can turn that off and uninstall it and just use Windows Defender. It does everything for you. It covers myware, spy, malware, spyware, and viruses, all the same stuff that most of these like expensive and resource hogging programs like McAfee and Norton. Avast and AVG I think are free. There's Kapernsky, that's another free one. They just, they take up a lot of resources and they usually cause a bit of trouble with XAMPP. If you can get it going, and as soon as it's installed, so we're really close now, we're gonna have the option to open the control panel. And then I'll talk about the difference between, differences between the Mac and the PC, okay? And as I already have stated, this should have happened at the end of class in the previous lecture, but I'm just quickly going back through it again to make sure before we set up WordPress, you guys actually have this running. If not, you can go back through the previous video and the beginning of this one and go back to the steps and get it set up. 
uh, Skype, VMware, uh, the, the, the variety of torrent downloading programs you can get, uTorrent uh, Views is another one that I see a lot of students using. I don't know why you guys don't just get Torch, okay? I'm not in any way condoning the piracy of copywritten material, but Torch is a torrent browser. Torch is like Google's answer to torrent browsing. It's, it's, it's just a, a different version of Chrome where it has a torrent downloader built into the browser. Torch is actually a lot less uh, heavy on your computer than, than you torrent or views would be. So, but th these types of programs that are kind of always connecting and talking to the internet, like in a full time sort of way, not just once in a while, those are the types of programs that require a little port on your computer to do that, right? And even though ZAMP isn't going like outbound and talking to the internet, it's just communicating on your computer, it likes to use the same ports as some of these programs. And that's one of the reasons why we have issues on PCs and Windows. Uh, Macs, you'll usually never have any port issues as long as you make a couple adjustments to your security settings. So all of this is covered in the notes right now. We're gonna go through all that Make sure it's working for everybody and then get WordPress set up, okay? So as soon as it's done, which mine is now, as I've been talking, it's been installing, uh, we go, I'm still recording, right? Yep. We go in here and it offers us the option to open the control panel right away. So I click finish and off we go. So now I'm gonna bump ahead in the slides a little bit because this will look a little bit different for Mac and PC guys. I wanna make sure you both see an example of what you should see. Now. I have my machine pretty cleaned up and well organized. I do have Skype on my machine. I do have other programs that do use port 80, which is the same little, commu it's a communication port. It's like a phone jack, okay? Think of it as a phone jack. And if something else has a, has a, a phone line plugged into it, ZAMP can't plug in. Okay, so hopefully that's fine on your PC. If it isn't, we'll get to fixing that in a second. Um, so I'm good on port 80. I do have Skype. And I just don't use Skype at the same time as I'm using ZAMP. It just, it just isn't something that I do. So as soon as you get those green, everything's good. We're up and running. So now before we move forward, I just wanna make sure you guys definitely got the right version. Everything was good there. Hopefully we have it installed by now. In week four, you should see the two versions. Um, be aware that on a Mac, I think I mentioned this in the last lecture too, a lot of Macs, the way they're set up, when you click on this, it will unzip it for you automatically as you're downloading it. So you won't actually have to unzip it um, when, when you get it. It'll just give you the program file and you can just run it. Now, some Macs, for the same reason, will start putting up red flags and saying, hey, you can't get this. So I hope as I was talking through this entire thing, you weren't sitting there trying to get this downloaded. Like, if you can't get it downloaded on your Mac, go into System Preferences uh, Security. Get to your security settings and you'll see it there and you can force it to download. I don't have a Mac to demo that with, but the Mac users told me it was quite simple. So that would be issue number one on a Mac, okay? On a PC and a Mac, as soon as you get the two things downloaded and unzipped, no one's had any trouble getting it to install. So everyone has at least gotten to this place on a PC or on a Mac, if I scroll down a little bit more, they've gotten to this place, okay? This is what the window looks like on a Mac. I'll make that a little bigger for you. Looks like that, okay? Then on a Mac, people have been running into the issue of not getting all of these servers to run. So once you get to this window, you click on manage servers and you wanna go to each of these sitting on them and hit start. Most students have been able to get the second two to run but not the MySQL, which is the most important one. Okay, and on a PC, people have been hitting start here and they can't get this one to run because the port's taken up. So we're gonna talk about that first. And unfortunately, because I've just installed this and already bypassed these firewall settings, in Windows, when you hit start on all these things, it will probably say, hey, whoa, are you sure you wanna do this? And I should have mentioned that as I was hitting start on the top three. You wanna accept all of the, like accept, allow it to do whatever it wants. Check both private and public networks when those windows come up and give it full permission and access to do whatever it wants. You don't wanna inhibit ZAMP from doing any of these things so that you can get it running. Um, so if you're in Windows, I want these first three. Now, FileZilla, I'm gonna teach you how to use FileZilla as a separate program, but knowing that it's at least running with XAMPP means you're not gonna have any FileZilla issues when we try FileZilla. 
in a couple lectures. So, so I want these top three services running. Do not worry about these other two, Mercury and Tomcat, okay? And if you're on a Mac, I want those same three services running, okay? So if I bump back up a couple slides here, um, you will see that one where I talk about the issues. Your best bet, if you can't get it running on your PC, is to go and turn all this stuff off and then restart your computer and see if you can get it started then. If it doesn't start then, if you scroll down a few slides, it shows you how to change the port, which I will show you here in a second. Okay, and yesterday in the previous lecture near the end, I went into MS Config, which is a little bit different in Windows 8 and 10, but I still explained in the video how to do it. You guys would go and turn off or disable any programs that are running on startup that you don't really need running on startup. And that makes your computer faster too. But Skype would be a major culprit for a lot of students not getting this working, okay? Um, there's a chance things still may not run correctly, in which case we'll change the port. So we'll go down. And if, you, and if that doesn't work either, something might have gone wrong in your install. I found a lot of cases where uninstalling it, like completely removing it and then reinstalling it has actually worked. So on a Mac or PC, Skype will cause problems with, 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 uh, with ZAMP on either, in either operating system. So make sure, make sure Skype and VMware are their two major culprits. Okay, moving on here. Um, if you have further compatibility issues, uh, well maintained this press. Have some issues. Okay. So the process of turning these programs off and stuff like that should take about five minutes. If we have to sit down and we still can't get it working like in the next class, you're gonna have to go to the help desk and just ask them what the heck is wrong with your computer. I mean, these guys are, are IT programmers. They, they actually will be able to go into the code and see why things aren't working. Okay, but for the most part, I think the slides I'm about to show should get it working. So we want these three main services up. Okay, so I'm on this slide now. I already told you that. Um, postpone. And I think everybody in here will probably have them running. I'm going to ask you in a minute. Should look like this on a PC. Mac users, you want to go to the next five, five slides. So on a PC, every time you want this up after you've shut your computer off, you would find it simply by searching for it this way. Okay. And it's, it's bringing up the control panel automatically. So if you search for it in Windows 8 or 10, when you search, there'll probably be a search result that says ZAMP control panel. That's what you want to bring up and start the services. When you're not using ZAMP, like if you're not going to deal with your WordPress demo site for a few days, stop the services, okay, and go down here and quit ZAMP. Make sure it's turned off. Okay, that way it's not taking up any extra space. You can go use Skype. There's no issues. As soon as you're ready to turn it back on again, um, you go in here, you go to programs, and again, in Windows and seven, and Windows eight and ten, this is a little different. But I'm in a program list here. I can go ZAM Control Panel, start, start, start. Everything should be working the same. If for some reason the Apache server doesn't turn on in Windows, something else has been turned on that is now using that port. It's not that hard usually to figure out what what the issue is. On a Mac, okay. I think your Mac will actually turn off ZAM every time you turn your computer off. So you'll just have to remember to turn it back on each time when you go back. But on a Mac, it's a little different. So you're going to go through these steps that you already went through and installed it. But then when you got done, you got to a screen that looked like this. Okay. And from this screen to get your services running and get to basically this screen for us in Windows, you want to go to manage servers. So you click on manage servers. And when you click on manage servers, you want to go to each of the servers, sit on them, and hit start. And they should all turn green. Each time you go back into your computer, this is a little tricky to find. You want to search for ZAMP in your applications or wherever you put it. Some people are directly not putting it in their applications. I don't know why. But you want to search for ZAMP, and you want to find this little gear icon. And when you double click it, that will provide to you this control panel, where you can go to the application and turn your servers on. Okay, so it's a little bit different on a Mac. And I know I went through that kind of quickly, but you have these slides online, so you can always refer back to them if you need to. Okay, so now, I should have done that a few minutes ago, sorry, made that a bit smaller. Um, if you cannot get this first server to run, this is the Mac troubleshooting that I did post in FOL already in these notes. Um, you're gonna wanna fix it in your terminal. 
Now, so Mac users, your terminal is a place where you can add file permissions. You can give permissions to certain programs and files. The way you get to it is by clicking on the search little icon there. It's called the spotlight. You would go into the ter you type terminal in the spotlight and it pulls up the terminal for you. Some of your Macs will require a password to be put in, in which case you just put it in and you can't even see it. It just goes right in and then it goes there. Take, take this exact text, not the little dash there, that's the bullet. Take the exact text without any extra spaces, paste it into the terminal and hit enter. Tr do that, go back here and try and see if it starts now and it should turn green. That was a student, I believe, in this section that found that fix for us. It's really simple, okay? And I appreciate that, by the way, because I don't have a Mac and it's hard for me to troubleshoot this with you guys. So get that exact code, put it into the terminal, hit enter so you know it goes in there, and then go and try and start. Now, if that doesn't work, it's probably because you're on the newest operating system you can get on a Mac, and you'll have to watch this two minute video and do what that guy says to do, okay? If you're on Yosemite, Flat, you pretty much aren't going to be able to avoid it. But it's only a couple minutes. So by the time I'm done going through all of this, everyone should have Xamp running, okay? Um, that Those are the Max, it's really simple, hands down. Like Max, you will not have port issues because Max will not let things double up on ports. You're using Xamp right now, so if you tried to use Skype, I believe it would just put it to another port. If you were using Skype and you tried to use Xamp, I think you would have to turn off Skype on a Mac, but if it's not working on your Mac, this one slide, slide number 16, go through that and you'll make it work. I guarantee I've gone, I've done it with a ton of students in the other section now, it worked every time. Okay, and then you'll get to a screen eventually that looks like this when you go into the browser and go to localhost. So we haven't done that quite yet. We'll do that in a second. Um, if you don't want to do it that way, you can actually just click go to application. In this little graphic here, if you click go to application, it takes you to what is considered local host for us in Windows. So all of this looks very slightly different for Mac users than what I can show you in Windows, but as soon as we set up Words, <laughs> WordPress, it's all identical. Okay, so back to PC users. If, so Mac users, that's what you gotta do. Get it green now while I'm still talking, if you can. PC users, these are the three you need green. If all else fails, I need the first two green and that's it. Okay, FileZilla just needs to be green because I want to know that, that you're going to have uh, no issues with your FTP when we actually use the FileZilla program, which is separate. Um, if it's not green, okay, and you have legitimately gone in and tried to turn off a bunch of nonsense programs that might be causing trouble, like these CC cleaners and all these, those aren't actually good things. Those are like spyware programs that are disguised as actual virus protection programs. I find that a lot of my students manage to get this stuff just, their machines just riddled with this stuff. You need to get it out of there. You might even have to go into uninstall, like into programs and uninstall them. If none of this has worked and you've tried all this stuff, you can change the port, okay? Mac users, you will not have to do this. PC users, here's how you would do this. Go to slide 19. It gives you the information on this, okay? So if you go to slide 19 and you follow the instructions, what you would do is stop the Apache server. Well, it's, it's probably already gonna be stopped because it's not working, right? Hit stop, go to config, go to here, and find every instance of 80 and change it to 8080. So there are three instances of it. If you just scroll through the file, they're not that hard to find. The two are near the top, then there's another one a little bit lower and then you save your file and then go back and hit start again and try and connect. It will then try and connect using a different port and that should then give it a place to work because something else is taking up this port. Okay, now I'm not actually gonna do that because I don't have any port issues. I'm just gonna keep it on port 80 and I'm in good shape. Um, additionally, uh, you, can make, you can do the same thing with the other two so services and uh, simply supply any number 1024 or above. So you go to the config file for the other two services of those, don't worry about FileZilla, but if, um, if MySQL is also not working, go in here, uh, go to config, sorry, go to this INI file and go and change the port to something like 1030 instead of 1024 and try a different port. It's always a port issue, okay? 
I can't come around and do this for you now if it's not working. I, I want to actually get this video through all the way out. I'll take a look at the end if I can, okay? But that's how you would resolve that. So, having said that, if you have your services green, you can all go to the next step together with me, okay? Now, okay, so on a Mac or a PC, here's what we're gonna do now. Assuming all your services are running and they're green, you go to any browser, it doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna pick Chrome, I don't care which one, it doesn't matter. You're gonna go there, and as the instruction said, you're gonna go to localhost. You don't have to type in the HTTP. You can literally just type in localhost, okay? When you type in localhost and you hit enter, you are now accessing the server's the SQL server, like Zamp's server. It should prompt you, unless it may not, if your computer, if it automatically detects the system language on your computer, which it sometimes can do, it may not prompt you, but it should prompt you for language. You should all get to this screen, okay? Did you guys see how I got here? Now, this is the point where you haven't caught up with me yet, right? So we're doing this together now. Everyone in their browser, go to local host. If your servers were green, you should get this. Or if it's bypassed the language setting, which I'm about to do, I'm gonna choose English, you will end up at this screen. And your Mac will look slightly different than this, okay? Not www.localhost, just localhost. And it should go there. In fact, it's impossible that it wouldn't if you installed the proper version of XAMPP uh, in line with the, what we're putting in here from FOL. So if anybody's watching this video, and you're not in my course, you would want to get the XAMPP install for version 1.8.3-4, which was good through the end of 2014. I just like this version better. If you got to a different screen, it's because you used a different version of XAMPP, and the, the digits on the Mac version are comparable. It's, it's get something 2014 or earlier, okay? So if your servers were green and you guys got the right version of XAMPP, you should be here. You guys all here? Excellent, we are moving on. Okay, now that we are here, I'm gonna briefly discuss what's, what's going on here. This is your server platform operating as GoDaddy in the background. So I can go to, this is not going to the web. As you learn in the web workshop, you can access places in your browser on your computer. You can access stuff in Windows Explorer through the file directory. This is just a place on your machine. So you can now, install WordPress just like you would do with GoDaddy using XAMPP instead. We're gonna do that by going to phpMyAdmin, okay? phpMyAdmin is right here in Windows. In your Mac, it'll be a little bit, located a little bit higher up, I think, but it's still called phpMyAdmin. Everybody click on that, and you should all be to here now, okay? Which, if we go back and refer to the notes, um, PC and Mac, I say go to status area, make sure your components are working. Obviously they are if you are able to get there. This is just a check-in type of thing, okay? Um, MySQL is the thing that's, that's creating this ability to, to be able to do this, okay? So it has to be running. If it isn't, you wouldn't have been able to get to localhost. So now, I talk about phpMyAdmin, okay? In phpMyAdmin, we're gonna make a database that we're then gonna use to accept a new WordPress install because the WordPress files are all in there when we go to download WordPress, but they will not run without the database, okay? So keep up with me here. Watch me closely and I'll pause briefly in between each step, all right? We're gonna go and set up a database, we're gonna put in this information, and then we're gonna go and grab WordPress and connect it to this database. So in phpMyAdmin, you're gonna set up a WordPress database, that's not gonna be the name of it, by the way. You're gonna call it WPDB01, so I'll do that with you now, okay? Go to databases. Everybody, you should all be in the same place. In the back, go to databases. In this field right here, type WPDB01. Just like the web workshop, when I would give you links, I'm going to go ahead after this and give you information to put into a WordPress file to connect it to this database. So if you type in a capital W, not gonna work. If you type in an O instead of a zero, not gonna work, okay? Now, guys, I, I can't go much slower than this because of the time constraints we have today, but if you aren't here, I'm gonna do this one more time. Type in localhost in your browser. If your servers are green, localhost should get you to this page. Go to phpMyAdmin and click on databases right here. 
If you don't want to lose your place, just stop looking at other people's computer. I'll give you enough time in between to get there. Type in WPDB01. Then over here, before you hit create, go down here and choose the language setting. This really won't affect the ability for the WordPress site to work, but we are in North America and the proper language setting for here would be UTF-8 general, which is after 16 and 32, it's actually below it. So you go down to UTF-8 and you find UTF-8 general, you choose that, and then you hit create, okay? Once you hit create, you have created a database called WPDB01. If you click on the database, it's got nothing in it. Databases are built with tables full of data. Okay, and that's how, and then they, the, the program as it runs, as the database runs, it goes in and queries those tables to put stuff together to make pages in the website. It's the same way Access has queries to find customer information in a database, right? So this is blank and waiting for our WordPress install. So what we're gonna do is connect a fresh install of WordPress to this database. Now, in this database, if we go a little further there, so we've created this now, okay? So the next slide, and if you're watching the video, you should pull up the PowerPoint slides yourself so you can see the whole slide. I'm just trying to make sure you guys know where we are. If we go to users from the database, and I'm not even gonna get in there in PHP My Admin. I'm only showing you this so you can see that automatically, whenever you make a database, there's a user called root that will be there. That's the easiest thing to use in XAMPP, unless you're worried about security on your own computer. If you use the root user to connect your WordPress install, you don't have to use a password. Okay, so we're gonna be using root. If you wanted to make a new user, I guess I could show you that. Let's say there was somebody you wanted to add, you click on users and you go add user right here and you could make their username and add a password. Okay, and that's how they would connect to the database. But for now, because I want to keep things simple, I'm showing you that so you know you can do it, but I just want to stick to the root user. So if you go into this database, and uh, or sorry, if you just click on users, for example, here, you'll see root exists, okay? And root exists, which means you need no password. And that's what I'm explaining in these slides here. So I, I suggest that you can go here and add a user if you want to, but this is not a requirement of what we're doing. So you can just skip right over that slide. Um, we're not making a WordPress called user. This was just practice if you want to do this. What we're actually going to do when we install WordPress is use the root user. Okay, so this was just in there as additional information if you wanted to try it out. All right. If you do something like that, it's always good to write down your username and password, save it as a text file, okay, which is a great thing to do when we go to set up WordPress, which we're about to do now, because you're going to have a database username and password, which for us is just root with no password. If you're using GoDaddy, it's usually some big, huge, long thing, and then some ridiculous password as well, okay? Then you're gonna have a username and password to log into WordPress, which is different. That, if you didn't do this, whatever, but that you should write down and save in a text file, okay? So return to the user screen, click Edit Privileges. So this is just a whole bunch of slides on users and how you would add extra users if you were working on this with somebody else, okay? But again, I'm, I'm trying to save you a bit of time in the video format for this lecture and for you guys here today, because I wanna just get WordPress installed. So that, be aware that you can do that stuff, but let's go right and set up, let's go right here and set up the root user. So here I talk about it. I say, hey, look at that root user. Why don't you, we use that as our test user for this demo site? Because that way you don't have to have a password. And then I say, let's go to WordPress and let's download WordPress. So where are we gonna go to download WordPress? WordPress.com? No, good, wordpress.org. So go to wordpress.org and download WordPress. I'm gonna do that right now, and it's like not a big file. And you, now that you've created the database, okay, you can leave localhost and get back in there very easily, but you don't need it up. Wordpress.org, okay, download WordPress. And then click download WordPress 4.3.1. Okay, it doesn't download it immediately. It takes you to the page where you download it. If you go to wordpress.org, you will always get the latest version of WordPress. That's what we want. We're not, we may not be using the latest version of XAMPP because I'm going with the more user-friendly version, but we always want the latest version of WordPress. So throw that on the desktop. Okay, go back to the desktop. Unzip it. Pay very close attention. So every Now, if you're on a Mac, it probably unzipped it for you already, okay? 
probably already did that for you. So you probably got a folder called WordPress, all lowercase, already on your machine. If you didn't on a Mac, just unzip it. I want this uncompressed just on your desktop or someplace where it's easy to get at, okay? So I'm gonna uncompress that. And then I'm gonna put it in a folder that was created by ZAMP so that I can connect it to ZAMP. Oh, I'm never gonna make my deadline here. Um, so if I go in here, now that it's unzipped, where'd it go? There. I am not gonna move this folder. If you're unzipping it in Windows, it's gonna give you a folder with the folder I want inside of it called WordPress 4.3.1. This is the folder I want. Go inside what you unzipped, unless you directly unzipped it to the desktop. You want the folder called WordPress. Mac, PC, same thing. Go inside and have that open. You're gonna cut that and move it to this place. You could do this by opening up two windows. I really don't care how you do it. It's just command click or right click and cut it or drag and drop it, whatever. In your C drive or in your hard drive, you should be able to find ZAMP. Some of you on a Mac may not be able to find it that easily. I'll show you in a second how to get around that. Everyone who can find it, find the ZAMP folder and inside of it find htdocs. htdocs is the folder we want. Inside of htdocs, paste WordPress. Not WordPress 4.3.1, just WordPress. So in the background, when you go into GoDaddy and just click the WordPress button, all of this is happening inside your server folder in like a matter of seconds. You're doing it manually, which helps you to better understand what's actually going on here. So I've put WordPress now into the server directory folder that ZAMP is using to operate WordPress websites. And WordPress is actually a root directory. So inside of it, I have all sorts of stuff, like tons and tons of files. You're not gonna go in here, you're not gonna worry about this for right now. There is an images folder somewhere, there's CSS right here, there's some CSS files, there's a ton of stuff going on in here. Like I said, a WordPress site will operate out of a root directory just like an HTML site. But because it's a database site, it has thousands of files in there. <coughs> We're only gonna deal with one file. And in order for this to work, you have to get WordPress to htdocs. So one more time, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna remove it from where I put it and I'm gonna do it one more time, okay? So I have it unzipped here. I'm gonna to go to C drive or your main hard drive on a Mac. You should have the ZAMP folder there. And as soon as you click on that, you should be able to go to htdocs, paste in WordPress. The folder called WordPress all lowercase, okay? Why is it taking so long? Hey, oh, I forgot to cut it. Okay, if you just copied it, then go back to where it originally was and delete it so that you don't have two versions of it. That's a bad thing, we don't want that. Okay, if you're on a Mac, you need to be very careful that you go directly into the htdocs folder from the main ZAMP folder on your hard drive because there's another folder called ZAMP inside of ZAMP. And if you go in there, it won't have htdocs in it. Because of the way Macs navigate folders, it's a bit confusing. I also had students in the other section, they literally couldn't find the ZAMP folder because they didn't put it into applications. They could not find it even with a file search. Here's your workaround for that. If you've been sitting here trying to find the ZAMP folder the whole time, I know you can get this to go up. Okay, get this, get this, uh, this little um, ZAMP window back up and click on open application folder. See that there, open application folder? That will take you directly to the ZAMP folder and you will see HD docs. So I've just spent almost five minutes making sure that you guys cut and paste a folder and put it in one place. That's step number one to making sure this works. Step number two now, if we go down and continue, so um, where were we? We were all the way down here. Da -da 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 -da. Is to set up uh, the one WordPress file that will enable it to connect to this database, okay? And that was all the way to here. We were pretty far. How did I get out of Oh, because I went up for that Mac slide. Here. So we've downloaded this. We've extracted it. We put it into htdocs and ZAMP. And again, if you're a Mac user, I explained to you, if you can't find htdocs, to use that ZAMP control panel and click open application folder. That will solve your issue. So we're almost done, okay? Now, I think it would be a good time in case you don't have this, and everyone in this section will have this, but... Go and download Notepad++. If you have a Mac, just go grab brackets. It's probably easier to deal with on your Mac. Or you can keep using Text Wrangler on your Mac too. Text Wrangler is acceptable as well. Because this file that we're about to edit 
If you try and open it in just a standard text editor, all the text will be on like a few lines and you're gonna have a really hard time finding the stuff you need to find. You want to open this in Notepad++, Text Wrangler, or Brackets. Brackets I'm suggesting you download just because it's, it's a cool program that might come in handy later. But as long as you have Notepad++ or Text Wrangler on your Mac, you're gonna be fine because we're going to edit this file right here, okay? So, assuming you put this in the right place, I'm gonna go and start going through these instructions. Here's what to do. Do this with me now, okay? Go into htdocs and open up that folder that you pasted there. There is a file here, one single file, that is very, very important to you because this is the one file where you're gonna make the connection between this big WordPress root directory installation and the database that you have waiting for it which once again is something that happens automatically if you're doing this with a remote host, not locally on your machine. So you're learning a bit more here. So go into the WP config sample file and open it up. Okay, it's, it's probably not gonna know what to do with it because it's a PHP file, so I would command click or right click and make it open in Notepad++ or Tank Strangler. Now the first thing I want you to do before you change anything in here just so we don't mess up the original version. You're always gonna want this to go back and refer to in case you screw up some text in here and something's not working. Open up, are you guys with me? Okay, I went to htdocs because I gave you more than enough time to paste WordPress into there. And I open up the WordPress folder and I open it up wp-config-sample. All of this is in the PowerPoint notes. I'm just going through them now, the steps. So open this up and go file save as and save it as WP config. Take off the dash sample. You don't need to type PHP again. As I've explained to you, once you have an extension on there, it's always gonna be there. You just change the file name. So WP config is the file that WordPress is gonna send out to the, the server to tell it where they want to connect. WP config sample is there so you don't have to build the configuration file. So we're gonna save this as WP config. Now it's saved. This is the file where we're going to put three things into it, or change three things. One is just going to be blank. And boom, WordPress will work, and we're done with this lecture. If it didn't work, you need to go back through these steps because somewhere along the way you missed something. Okay, and for you guys that I'm looking at in this class right now, because I have to leave early today, I'm offering you that open kind of time before your first class on Wednesday next week because I'm going to have to immediately leave when I'm done with this. I'm sorry. So what goes here? What do you think? So leave this, okay? And this is all, as you go through the rest of the PowerPoint notes here, everything I'm about to do is all specifically written out in the notes, okay? And it even tells you what to do if you screw up. And then there's some more information on ZAMP. This is what's happening now. Everything's working. This is what you should get. This is where, what we're about to do. Then in case you didn't do it right, you might've gotten to this screen. Here's what to do to fix that. Okay, finally, we get here, I talk about making stronger passwords. Then we get here and we build the site. Okay, and then here, I talk about how to get back to it and where to go, where you're gonna find stuff. We should have our site set up for next class. So all this is gonna happen in like three minutes right now. Okay, if you get lost, you go back to the notes and you use my video beside the notes, you will get through it. So assuming that you did go in and put um, in the C drive or your hard drive, in the ZAMP htdocs folder, WordPress. If you don't have typos in the file we're about to make, this should work. If it doesn't, you got typos or you put this in the wrong spot. Or this isn't actually the WordPress folder and it's buried underneath another folder, in which case you're not even in the proper directory level, okay? You gotta go back, I've shown you how to do this. So I've, inside of here, I should see WP config as well, because I just saved that in the same exact spot. You didn't move it anywhere else. It should have defaulted, because that's where you open it from, to save it right in this folder, inside of WordPress, not in a subfolder. I'm going to make this WPDB01. See, that's where if you had a typo when you made the database that you were supposed to name that, it won't connect. You do not get rid of the two quotes. Watch, I'll make this bigger. Okay, so this is about maybe line 23, okay? It's not that far down in your file. You're gonna do three things here and that's it. And then I do in the PowerPoint notes, I talk about the rest of these things, but you don't have to change any of this stuff. It's all actually set up the way you want it to be. You only have to change these first three things. So literally, all I'm asking you to do is type in WPDB01. Do not get rid of the single quotes. Go where it says username here, get rid of it, put 
What was that user I said we're going to use with no password? What was it? Root. Very good. Put in root. Not R-O-U-T-E. Okay. We're talking about a root folder, like a tree root. R-O-O-T. Root user. And it doesn't have a password, so you literally go over password underscore here and just delete it. But you still keep the two little quote marks. If you don't do that exactly how I have it, what I'm about to do will not work. If it doesn't work, you've done something wrong here. Go back and fix it, okay? Obviously, now that I've changed this, I have to go and save it. As soon as I save this, I'm connecting to that database I set up. It's waiting for my WordPress install, you know, in localhost for XAMPP. I'm going to use the root folder, or the root user, sorry, so I just put root, and that doesn't have a password, so I just cleared the password field, but I still left the two single quotes, and I've saved it. I shouldn't have to go back in there unless something doesn't work. And if it doesn't, you go back and compare to what I tried to show you. Now go to a browser. And instead of just going to localhost, now we're going to access our root directory. So we're going to go to localhost forward slash WordPress. This is all in the notes, OK? Localhost forward slash WordPress. When you do that, if you did everything right, which should never take as long as I've given you in this lecture. It should be a little quicker than that. That's your first set of steps on a test, is setting up a new WordPress install. It should take you to a screen that asks you to choose a language. If you're on a Mac, it probably won't do that because Macs can, can communicate with the local host and tell it what the language settings are. So if you're on a Mac, it probably went right to this screen, which means if you click Continue for English, Mac and PC, we should all be on the same screen now. OK, so this is just really simple plug and chug. Let's call our WordPress site Comp5062 Demo or just demo, demo site, I don't care what you call it. Make up a username, okay, make up a password. Okay, and once you make up a password, mind, it doesn't matter what it is, right? It doesn't matter. And you can hide it if you want or not, whatever. If you wanna confirm the use of a weak password, which you may need to do if your password was password, like mine, this is just local on your machine, right? It doesn't matter what you make your password. And then you can put your email in there, which again, because it's just local, WordPress is not really going to be able to send you an email if you forget your password, okay? Because it's local, it's not connected to an actual live server. If you do forget it, I'll have to go into the database in localhost and find it for you. What I would do right now is, as you're doing this, save it in a text file and put it in your WordPress folder so that you don't lose it. Then you remember what it is next week. From there, you click Install WordPress. And right now what's happening is all those files are getting plugged into that database we created with XAMPP. And instead of using GoDaddy, we get to run WordPress locally on our machine, okay, which, is a, which is a cool skill to have for a lot of reasons. Like I've talked about, if you're making a site for a client, you get it all set up, they like what they see, then you migrate it to their hosting company later. Okay, so this may take anywhere from 30 seconds to three or four minutes, it depends on how fast your computer is, because a lot of stuff is happening here. Okay, so if it works, you should get to a screen that says this. I've seen already today a few people get to this screen, but there's just a blank white bar here. For some reason, the success message doesn't come up, but it still worked completely fine. Okay, everything still worked. So to leave you then, I will show you now that you have just created a website. If you go to localhost forward slash WordPress now, it will actually load up your WordPress site. There it is. It's all set, ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna change it and get in there. But see, this is cool. Now we all have the same website, so we can all make changes to it and learn how to use the dashboard together. Um, I'm not gonna get into the dashboard quite yet in this video, but if you guys wanted to get into it, you would just add wp-login.php to the end of the URL. And that will take you right to the login screen. And if you're using a good browser, it will actually know your login information, and you can go in here and get to the dashboard. I want to make a page in my site, I add a page. I want to change the theme, I go to appearance theme. So this is all stuff that'll come later, but our main goal today was to get WordPress up and running. There you go. All right, now, um, in the slides, as you can see, if you go through the rest of these slides, I do suggest at the end that if you go right to the URL localhost forward slash WordPress, you should see it, but I, I am not actually sending you into the dashboard yet. That was just part of the video. I thought I would get you guys in there. Okay, and that's it. Um, 
get it running. It needs to be running by the next class, okay? I'll see you then.